Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Did anybody come expecting God to do something today? Did anybody come with expectation in the house that God was going to move? Is anybody in need of God to do something greater than you can understand or think? Then can I get a couple of people to magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together? Can I get somebody on this side to magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together? I, I, I'm, I'm here to say we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Can I get a couple of praises in the house? Can I get a couple of praises in the house? Can I get somebody to praise him today? Can I get somebody to lift your hands because you know he's good? Can I get somebody to wave your hands because you know if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, anybody over here know had it not been the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. My God, my God. I think I got a couple of people in here that want to praise him. Somebody came in expectation. Somebody is believing God to do something on today. And I am believing that we are in this house together. Can you give me one more time a big hand clap for our God? Because our Lord is good. And he is great today. Hallelujah. You can have your seat. I'm excited about what God wants to do. I'm excited because I'm in expectation that God wants to do something great in this place. I believe if you come in expectation, you'll receive something. If you're not looking to receive, there's nothing that you should be getting. But when I have an expectation that God is going to do greater than what I could ever imagine or think, there's something about that I'm sitting on the edge of my seat looking for God to move. At any moment, God could change your situation. There's something about just a praise in the mo right moment at the right time that God could do something at home while you're right here in the middle of worshiping him. I don't know what you have at home that's waiting on you, but just a praise in the moment could change your situation. My God, my God, I don't know if anybody's in expectation, but I'm looking for God to do something on today. Hey. I, I'm trying to tell you, 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 you got to be ready to praise God nice and early. It's 12 o'clock, ain't gonna get no more later than this. You got to be ready to give God some praise because I'm here to tell you that it, my life ain't perfect right now and I need God to intercede and move on my behalf. And so I need to offer him something, David said, that's going to what? Cost me something. Mm. You give him a, you give him a, a wave, you'll get a wave blessing. Uh, you, you, you give them a hand clap, you get a hand clap blessing. But when you get a God's been good to me kind of praise, you get a God's been good to me kind of blessing on the way. Hey! Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. Amen. I came in some expectation today. I don't know what you prayed about this week, but I prayed for God to do something. I prayed for God to move in a way that he can never move. I prayed for God to do something in my life that only he can do. I, I'm, I'm looking for, as we would say, an old song, I'm looking for a miracle. I'm expecting the impossible. I need God to do something on this morning. All right, well. Let's do the protocol. I want to thank God for being here on today. Just wanted to tell you what kind of Sabbath it was going to be today. Just trying to let you know we was going to worship God. We was going to praise God today. Because we're in expectation that God needs to do something in my life. My family is not perfect. My, 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 everything is not going the way that I wanted. And so I need a God that will work on my behalf, that would move uh, on my behalf. And I'm in expectation that he's going to do something great. Can I get an amen right there? Uh, it is so good to be here. Miracle City is uh, not a strange place. It is home to me. And, and I'm grateful to be here. I give honor 
to Pastor David Franklin and, and Cynthia Franklin and the young men that are part of this church and this family. I also give honor to my beautiful wife that is here, to Misha, who joined me today. And I am grateful. If you'll turn in your word to Genesis chapter 5, as we read today, I, I have a heart to believe that uh, God truly wants uh, to grow us. Um, he doesn't want us to stay where we are. If I can tell you something, God wants to build relationship. God wants to change your life. God wants to do something in your home, but I, I, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it may take a little bit more than you just coming to church on Sabbath to begin to grow with God. See, see, attendance doesn't equal relationship. Come on. Uh, see, you can come and hear, but the Bible says there's something that God wants to do when you become a doer of his word. So it's not enough just to hear the word of God. It's not just enough to tend, but we must become a doer. Ask your neighbor real quick. Say, are you a doer? Ask your second choice. Say, second choice, are you a doer? Ask your third choice. Say, I'm sorry you're my third choice, but are you a doer? Because the Bible lets us know that faith without works is dead. So if I'm expecting something, I've got to do something. I'm looking for God to do something more than we could ever imagine or think. In Genesis chapter 5, we're starting at verse 21, and it is uh, sort of the genealogy from Adam to Noah. And it speaks and it says, when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. And it says, Enoch again walked, somebody say faithfully. Faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. Mm. If we jump over to Hebrews chapter 11, we start at verse 5. It says, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. In verse 6, it says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. The title of my message today is Taken. Can we pray? Just real quick, real, let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this moment that we have with you and we thank you for what you're going to do in this place. We thank you for the spirit of expectation and we thank you for your holy presence that is roaming through, seeking whom there may be a blessing and a miracle for in this place. We love you, we honor, and we thank you in Jesus' name. We say amen. Amen. Uh, anybody ever know the difference between, if, if, if you know today's terms, there, there's this difference between people being in relationships and people just being friends. You, if you've ever heard somebody, you ask them, uh, and there's a guy and a girl, and you say, hey, I, I, I want to know the status of your relationship. You'll either hear somebody say one or two things. They'll say, yes, we're together, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, or they'll say something like, no, 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 it's not that serious. We're just what? Friends. Mm. We're just friends. 
Friends means that there is a low level of commitment that is required in what we are doing. Uh, now, I, I, I know that can be a little harsh at times, but friendship means that I don't have to commit to what's happening. Friendship means that I'm just right where we are. Friendship means that you don't have too many expectations of me, and I don't have too many expectations of you. There's something about understanding and being connected in that when you're just friends, there's a there's an ability to roam around if you want to be honest about it. You, you got a little bit of wiggle room. I don't need you all up on me and I won't be all up on you. If I'm talking to somebody, don't get jealous because we're just what? Friends. We're just friends. I'm not sure what you expect of me, but we're just friends. Now, I remember when I met my wife, we were working together, and, and we weren't even friends from the top. I can tell you that. She was my boss and still is, and, uh, and, and, when, and when we connected, uh, she, she wasn't that fond of me um, because... And I don't understand. I mean, come on now. You know, she, she, was, she, was, she was in her early years of knowing Jesus. She didn't really have discernment like she needed to have. Amen, amen. Because if she'd have discerned well, she would have known. <laughs> come on now. Amen now. You better bless Jesus up in here. Amen. But, but the idea is, is that we, we, we started becoming friends. And we were friends, we were hanging out, and we were doing life together, and, 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 and we would go out. And at times when we would go out, one of the things that we understood is that we were just friends. So if, if, if a guy came in and, and looked at her or something like that, I didn't get all up in a tizzy, you know what I'm saying? I was like, hey, that's just my friend, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't owe her nothing, she don't owe me nothing. They say she's just a friend. They say she's just a friend. That's, that's what they say. But here's the problem. Men and, men and women can't be friends but, but for so long. You understand? I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't care what they tried to tell you. We best friends. Y'all ain't best friends. You ever seen brown sugar? You know that's not the way that it goes. But anyway, so, so we're best friends. But all of a sudden, when we move from being just friends to being in the relationship when when all of a sudden you're taken there means that there's a responsibility that I have to you and there's a responsibility that you have to me it means you're no longer available for everyone else we are now in a very secluded place where it's just me and you see there's something about being open and having open relationships where we're just friends, where you run the risk of the person that you're just friends with moving on to somebody else. But there's something about when you know you've been taken. Mm. There's something about when you know you're no longer available on the market. You, you know how it gets y'all sit all close together. You, you know what I'm talking about. You start walking in the mall all close and beside one another. I remember we were used to walk in the mall and, and if too many young ladies was coming this way, my, my wife would grab my hand just to let them know he's taken. He's taken. Because when you're taken, it means you're not available anymore. You're not open to certain looks anymore. You're not open to certain thoughts anymore. There's, there's a responsibility that you have to the one that you've committed yourself with. There's, there's, there's a responsibility that you have to the person that you've committed your heart and your time to. I, I no longer have the wandering eye. I'm focusing uh, on what I've committed myself to. I, I'm not being distracted by the old phone calls. Uh, I'm committed. I am, I'm directing myself. I'm focused in. And I'm often wondering at times, uh, is our relationship with God like that? Are we just in a I'm friends relationship with God, which allows us to wander? 
are everywhere and still try to keep God as a side piece? Because if you're taken from God, if God has taken you, if you're on a one-on-one -on -one relationship, I'm no longer open to every and anything. I'm no longer open to your, your opinions and thoughts about what I should and shouldn't do. There's, when this relationship has been sealed, when, 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 when Christ has taken me, I, I want you to understand that we're in the place where when God has taken me, I'm no longer available for the enemy's use. See, sometimes we're still available for what, what the enemy wants to do because we're not in a full, committed relationship with God. And we're talking about growing up as a church. We're talking about being a church that is connected. We're talking about understanding what God wants to do. And, and I'm a little bit interested in understanding where is your focus in this part of life. We, we oftentimes, I believe, had the tendency, in my opinion, to walk near God but not walk with God. Because <laughs> there's a difference. You can... You can walk near God, be in relationship. God has saved you. God has claimed you. God has brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. There's a, there's a great possibility that you are saved, but there's a great possibility that you're saved and still open for other things. I say that because... Oftentimes, we're, we're walking close to God, but we're not walking with God. Because there's something about walking with God that you start to learn there must be an agreement that you are in. There, there must be something that... You, you, you ever seen a child whose parent is trying to bring them along? Nobody in here. I'm not saying that. But you see the child and you see the parent dragging the child because they want the child to be with them, but the child doesn't want to be in connection. I want to do my own thing. Oftentimes, Christians and the people of God, we find ourselves in the same place where God is dragging us along in relationship. Mm, I don't want to do. I don't necessarily want to live that way. I don't necessarily want to see it that way. And God is saying, I'm not asking you what you want to do. I'm asking you, are you ready to walk beside me in relationship? Because I want to be in relationship with God. I want to be in relationship with God. The Bible lets us know that uh, two cannot walk together unless they, the Bible says in Amos, what? They agree. There's some agreement in what they're doing. There's, there's agreement in, in, in their walking together. There's some kind of, of, of pulling. God doesn't want to pull. God wants us to walk together with him. Today, I want to help us grow because I want us to stop believing that proximity equals growth. Just because I'm in proximity doesn't mean I'm growing. Just because I'm coming Sunday after Sunday doesn't mean I'm growing. I mean, and I'm sorry, I said Sunday, but it's Sabbath. I know, I got it. I'm corrected oftentimes in the meeting, I know. But you can come on Sabbath, you can come on Sunday, you can come on Wednesday, I don't care what day it is, and still not grow. Because attendance doesn't grow us. Seeking after God does. The Bible lets us know, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first, somebody say first. first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Not seek ye first church, not seek ye first getting here at Miracle City, not seek ye first getting at the mix, seek ye first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness and then everything else that you're looking for will be what? Added unto you. So I'm trying to move us from the place of being church Christians 
to Jesus Christians. Because if you take the movement, I promise you this, you'll begin to know him more and more. The more you get to know him more and more, the more you'll grow. The more you'll grow, the more you'll see more of yourself. The more you see more of yourself, the more you understand the grace of God. The more you understand the grace of God, the more you understand you're not worthy. The more you understand you're not worthy, the more you'll go back out into the world and reach out for those who are far from God. See, if I think I'm good, I'll act like I'm good if I understand I'm still in the maturation process then I'll grow as God is growing me I, I tend to think we think we've outgrown church and maybe we have but you'll never outgrow God so my idea is that it takes time to begin to walk with God and it must be something that you make the decision to agree on. Unless two or three are gathered together touching and agreeing, he says, there I'll be. I, I need agreement. God always speaks to agreement. So what does it take to walk with God? Mm. What is the idea or what is the concept as we grow of what it takes to walk with God. Can I, can I give to you my, my first thought? My first thought is that you must, number one, submit. Mm. Just ask your neighbor real quick. You hear what he said? I don't know if you heard what he said, but you must submit. You must submit to the will of God. You must submit to what God is saying for your life. You must bring yourself to the place where you are no longer in a tug of war of your will over God's will. You're fulfilling the purpose that God has for your life. I must submit myself. First Peter 5 and 6 says this, humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up and somebody say due time here's the reason why due time is important because your submission is not about you receiving it when you want to it's about you receiving it when God says it's to be received because oftentimes you believe that your submission automatically qualifies you to receive the blessing that you've been asking God for submission is submission for your sake Ah, because you've got to what? Somebody say grow. I've got to grow. I've got to go further. I've got to submit. Why is it so hard to submit? Because oftentimes we believe we know what's best. I love church because church is filled with the most people who know it all. I love it. I love it because... We cannot know God but know the word. Ah. Yep. Yep. How? Because I can often give you a scripture that will defend my point of view, but the problem is it's not in conjunction with God has already said and what I know. <laughs> well, you know the Bible says, I do. But what did God say? Because growing requires you to submit. Submit requires you to listen to someone else but yourself. Listening to someone else but yourselves means you've got to do, I'm sorry to say this word, shut up. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I like it. I like it when it's quiet. I tell my church this is the best time. Why? Because it means somebody's thinking. 
and it means somebody's going over in their head, have I submitted myself to God? Mm, have I given God over everything that I believe? Have I given him over my heart? What have I done? Have I stopped being in control of my life and have I allowed God to be in control of my life? Am I growing? Here's one of the indications that you're growing is that you're submitted. How do you know you're submitted? You're probably talking less. Because the submitted heart who's in agreement with God is not oftentimes trying to figure out how it defends itself. It's trying to figure out how it comes in alignment. I love the body of Christ because it's a group of people who want to go after God. It's just oftentimes we forget to be in alignment. And everybody knows when you don't get an alignment on your car, what happens? It begins to do what? Shake. And then eventually it starts to do what? Go its what? Own way. <laughs> See, <laughs> your rebellion against church and God starts subtle. You feel a tug to the left. Uh, uh. What's going on with this car? Uh, I don't like it. Yeah, but you got to get in alignment. I'll do what? I'll take care of it. What? Later. Eventually, you start finding yourself going this way. Hey, what's going on here? And here's what happens. When there's a lack of submission, there's more effort on your part. Lack of submission means there's more effort for you to keep your life in line. The more I get jacked up, the more bumps I hit, the more I'm not submitted to God, is the more that the will is taking control. And the will was never supposed to take control. I'm supposed to be in control of the vehicle. I'm trying to figure out when are you going to get things in what? Alignments. When are you going to what? Submit. When are you going to what? Stop offering your opinion every time we have something and say, you know what? It's not time for me to speak always. Because if I'm walking with God, I can discern when I need to open my mouth and when I need to say nothing. That's hard to do when you know everything. It's hard to do when you're in control of everything. It's hard to do when you want everybody to see it your way. But you've got to submit. I'll still be around even if I never get to preach here again. I'll still be walking around. I get it. I understand. I get it. Who invited him? We should have voted. We should have had a church meeting on this. I will be writing this in my connect card. <laughs> Highly displeased this week. <laughs> but we've been called to submit. And your submission and God's submission looks different. Because what God wants you to submit is the very thing that you don't want to submit. You will only submit what you want to submit. I have given it over to God. What about that? Mind your business. Mm -mm, that's, not, that's not for you. Keep that over there. I'm not doing that. Mind your business. Church people are so nosy. God. Oh, man. Oh, buddy. Submit, the Bible says, all your ways to the Lord. Submit everything. Your opinion, your thoughts, your idols. The things that you hold so dear to you that cannot be broken unless God himself descends from heaven to tell you to break it. 
when you're in submission, you wait on due time. Because everything that needs to be changed and done doesn't need to be done when it comes to your mind. It needs to be done in due time. For the Bible lets us know that there is always a time and a place for everything to happen. When you act outside of the season that you're supposed to be in, you can dramatically shift what God is trying to do and mess up folk and damage people and do folk wrong and hurt folk in the wrong way that was never supposed to be hurt that way, all because you want it to be right, because you know it all. Only got a couple more minutes. Just hold on. The second way we walk with God is we've been called to believe. Somebody say believe. 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 For Hebrews 11, 1 to 2 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good testimony. It is us beginning to believe when we do not see. When we are submitted and we now begin to act in faith, guess what? We can move in our life regardless of what's taking place around us. I believe even though I don't see it. I believe that God will make a way even though I don't feel it. I believe that God can move in a way I've never seen before even though I've never seen it. I believe in spite of what my past tells me. I believe. I believe I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? Because he is my strength. And his strength is made perfect, what? In my weakness. And so in my weakest points, even when I've messed up, even when I don't have things all together, even when I'm still struggling in my walk with God, I yet can still find favor because I believed in Christ, not myself. You will never get to what God wants you to do and where he wants you to be if you trust yourself. But if you believe in the one who can do all things, you can get anywhere at any time and any way because God is with you. And the Bible lets us know if God is for you, then there's nothing that can be what? Against you. Tell somebody beside you, you got this. You got this. See, oftentimes we think we come to church and people are saving us where we are. See, see, you, you think you're stand, standing or sitting beside a person who's got it all together, but I'm here to tell you, some of us are just walking this thing out by faith. We ain't got nothing together. We jacked it up yesterday, jacked it up on Thursday, jacked it up on Wednesday, and we're trying to get today on Saturday. But it's not because I've got it all together that I'm on point. I just believe that God God wants to do something on the inside of me regardless of me. Yeah, I jacked it up. Yes, I did. I said something I shouldn't have said. Yes, I did. I went down the wrong way. Yes, I did. I yelled at my kids. I know nobody in here does, but yes, I did. Because, see, the wrong idea is that when you walk through those doors in churches, you believe that everybody from the threshold on has it all together and you feel like you're sitting in a seat all by yourself, disappointed, and the enemy is telling you, you know you're not worth it. And I'm trying to tell you, all of us around here are just as jacked up as we can be, but by the grace of God. I'm going to tell you. I don't know what else somebody's going to tell you. They might, they might look good and have it all together, but I, I, I just want you to understand, you still come into a place where people are broken and we're all trying to be put back together. I'm no better than you. You know better than me. We're doing this thing all together one time, making it happen. God is changing me. God is making me new. God is refreshing me. Why you look so good? Just the favor of God. I ain't done nothing. I ain't got it all together. I ain't put it all together. Just the favor of God. That's what's resting on me. You happen to see the glory. Just like when Moses was in the presence of the Lord, you saw the glory, not of him, but of God. What you see on the life of people is not what they've done, but You've seen the glory of the Lord. 
so-and-so. Yes, I can walk around and say I'm highly favored. Yes, I can walk around and say I'm more than a conqueror. Why? Because I believe by faith. No, I don't have it all together, but I believe that God is working on me. Somebody say daily. This is a daily thing. In order to walk with God, you've got to walk daily with him. You've got to recognize I'm taken. I'm not available anymore. I believe God is already doing something on the inside of me. Devil, you don't have access to my life anymore. I am already claimed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe. I believe. I believe when I can't see it. I believe. I believe that God wants greatness for me. I believe I'm healed when I don't feel it. I believe that depression is no longer there. I believe. I believe that brokenness isn't still. I believe. I know. I, yes, I dealt with it yesterday, but I still believe. I know. I, I was struggling with it all night, but I still believe. Why? By faith. Why? Because faith is something I cannot see. It's something that I'm hoping for. I'm in hope. It is the evidence of things not seen yet. That's how I can tell you we ain't got it all together because there's some stuff that we're believing on the inside of ourselves that has not come to pass yet and we're believing by faith that God is going to do it. I know that I am not where I want to be, but I'm not somebody say where I used to be. I'm not where I used to be. Don't try to hold me to what I did before. I've gotten better. I don't care what you say before I'd have punched you in your eye, but today you only got a slap. I'm just telling you. The violence has gone down. You went from being knocked out to a swole jaw. Thank the Lord. I'm getting there because I'm trying to walk with God. Some, some of y'all going to look at me like, mm -mm, this is not me. I've got it. I'm no. I'm, I'm saying with you, please help me after church so I can get what you got. But I'm still working out, as the Bible says, our soul salvation. I'm still working out with me. And it takes walking with God. This thing takes time. And, and I say this, it takes daily time. And the reason it's daily is because there's such a work that needs to be done on the inside of us that God needs to keep removing things and removing things and removing things and removing things. And so daily as I walk with him, I decrease, he increases. I decrease, he increases. I decrease, he increases. You see more of him, less of me. More of him, less of me. And before not, you say, you look different and you say yep it's nothing but God I've been walking with him a long time and I still don't have it all together I'm still looking for God to do more in me and the last thing that I'm commissioning you to do is how you walk in faith with God is you've been called to live somebody say live you've been called to live. Now I'm going to tell you something. Everything that is set up for you right now is not set up for you to live. It is not set up for you to win. It is not set up for you to be a more than a conqueror. It's not set up for you to go far. It is only set up for you to go to a limit. Yes, you've got salvation, but God wants to make sure that you're living out that salvation through purpose. The enemy's design is to make sure that none of that happens in your life. He doesn't care if you come to Sabbath church as long as you're not affecting nobody else on the outside. He doesn't care how often you come as long as you don't get a testimony because if you get a testimony all hell will break loose in here if you get a testimony you'll have something to declare that nobody else does my God is faithful because a testimony will drive you it's nothing like a testimony see the Bible is just filled with a bunch of testimonies of what God did. That's all it is. It's just, it's just a bunch of stories together talking about the goodness of the Lord. I used to be this, but now I'm this. I used to be broken, but now I'm healed. I used to be out my mind, but now God is saving me. There's something about understanding that a testimony will send you on your way never to return to say, God has been good to me. Anybody in here got a testimony? Like a real testimony. Like one of those you just don't know. Yeah. Catch 
catch my thoughts on a dark day in the middle of the night. You, you don't know. We understand scripture that what is ahead of us is not even for us. It's, it's not even to be literally lived out a purpose for John 10 and 10 lets us know that a thief only has one thing in mind. He wants to steal, to slaughter, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give you everything. Somebody say abundance. More than you expect. Life in its fullness until somebody say overflow. I feel the spirit of overflow in this place. I feel God claiming overflow in your life. I've been dealing with depression for years. Overflow of happiness. Overflow of joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I am looking for there to be an overflow in my life of the things that I could never obtain by myself. Yes, I'm trying to figure out how to get this thing overflow. God is fulfilling me. He's bringing overflow. And I've been called to live out the life he's called for me to live. I just want to let you know today you have purpose. You have purpose. Can you, can you just let somebody, somebody may have come here today and I don't want them to leave out thinking that they, they, they're not connected with God. Will you just tell your neighbor real quick you have purpose? Some know you have purpose. You have purpose today. You have purpose for God to do something in your life that you have never seen before. And I want you to let you know that we all have the same access to know our purpose. Your access isn't limited because you sit on the back row, third seat to the left. I want to let you know everybody has the same access to the same God who can do the same miracle on the inside of you that he's done for me. There's access. There's access for God to do greater things on the inside of you. One thing that I understand is that when you begin to have access, God begins to walk with you. When God begins to walk with you, you begin to have a testimony. When you begin to have a testimony, nothing can separate you from the love of God. You begin to understand, I don't care what you say, what you think. I don't care how you think about it. You can't tell me different about how great my God is. You can't convince me. Otherwise, I've seen him do way too much for you to make me think he's doing something else. God is too great and has done too many things in my life. Yeah. Pastor, how do you know this? I know this because I've seen the miracle in the hand of God. I have a testimony. I have something to say. I, I, I say this. I, I'm not trying to give people an experience through the Bible. I'm trying to give people an experience through what God has done in me. See, you can be in overflow when God is moving in you and with you. You always have to go back and look for a scripture when you have no testimony. Let me, let me, oh, hold on. Hold on, let me search for something for you. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on. What you, what you got? Hold on, let me, wait, wait a minute. But when you got a testimony, child, you don't know what God has done for me. If he brought me out, he can bring you out. If he can deliver me, he can deliver you. I'm telling you, I was crazy, but where I am now, nothing but the goodness of the Lord. So all testimonies do for you is just put a concrete in. God is good. How you know he's good? I've seen him do it for myself. <laughs> You're trying to figure out what is going to drive you. What is going to drive you to live out your purpose? What is going to drive you to fulfill the plan that God has for your life? Can, can, can I tell you its purpose? It's, it's purpose. Without there being a trigger of purpose in your life, you'll always run dry on the things that will motivate you. See, without, without there being purpose, you'll, 
You'll always be left empty trying to figure out and pull from people and, 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 and get something from somewhere else and somebody else instead of getting it through God because you're not walking in purpose, you're just walking in potential. And today, we've been called to walk with God. Faithfully. Somebody say faithfully. faithfully. The Bible says he did it faithfully. Meaning, he didn't drop it on the weekends. He didn't stop walking with God when he had to go to the party. He didn't have to stop walking with God when he got around a certain group of friends. Here's what I tend to believe. The reason why our world is not changed is because we have a lot of lackluster Christians who don't really have a desire in their heart to see the world changed. And because we walk in liberty, we take it. And so there's some things that God has declared and brought you out of that you were supposed to go back and get somebody else and bring them out of, but because of your liberty, you stayed right where you were and you're wallowing in your stuff. Just because you have the liberty doesn't mean that's what God's called you to do. Why? Because you'll keep your family in bondage. Just because you don't get drunk doesn't mean the example that you're showing won't get somebody else drunk. Y'all like that? Mm -mm. No. Because what we do is we tend to say this is my life. But when I'm walking with God, my life is no more. The Bible says I become a living what? Sacrifice. Holy and acceptable and pleasing unto God. For whatever he wants me to do, I am in it. I am for it. Today, I want you to begin to walk with God, not near God, not around God, not ahead of God, not behind God. Walk with God. Because here's the thing. If you're walking with God, that means when he speaks, you hear. If you're ahead, you can't hear. If you're behind, you're trying to listen. But when you're beside him, all he's got to do is turn to you and say, it's time to move. And you don't have to go and ask your girlfriend and your boys what the Lord said because you heard it right with your own ears, right with your own spirit. Today, I believe that we've been called to be taken with God. Not as Enoch was taken up, the Bible says, not to be seen anymore, but taken in the respect that God wants to do great things on the inside of us. Can I tell you, stop being available for what the enemy wants to do in your life and start being available for God to change your life so that he can do a great thing in this place. Can we pray today? Let's take this moment and pray. Father, we thank you for your spirit that's in this place. We thank you because we no longer want to experience relationship with you just on the outskirts, but we want to be in intimate relationship with you today. Help us to grow, <laughs> not to be entertained, not to be appeased, not to just walk in what we feel, but help us to walk with you. Help us to connect with you. Help us to submit, to believe, and to live out what you've called for us to do. For we love you, we honor you, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Today, if you're here and you're ready to make the decision to follow Jesus and you're saying, this is, this is what I want to do. I'm ready to give my heart to him. I'm ready to leave what I am doing to take on what he's called me to do. If that's you today and you're saying, I just, I want to surrender my life to God. 
I want to give my heart over to him to see him do in me more than I could ever imagine or even think. In this house, just on the count of three, and can we do this? Let's take a moment. Everybody just close your eyes just in this moment because we have the tendency to try to pull out who it is when we still need working within our own selves. In this moment, I just want this to be an opportunity for someone who may have never taken this step before to allow God to do this. So on the count of three, if you're here and you're ready to give your heart to God, and you're saying, I'm ready to make the next step to see all my purpose that God has put in my life fulfilled. On the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. You ready? Ready? One, two, three. Let me see a hand in the house. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. Amen. Amen. Listen, you can put your hand down. I want to lead you in a prayer. And it's not the prayer that saves you, but it's the posture of your heart. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for accepting me just as I am. Forgive me for my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I commit to putting you first in my life. Take control of the throne of my life and make me who you want me to be. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I pray that you were blessed by this message. We'd love to connect with you beyond this moment. So I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you'll get updates on when a new sermon is posted, as well as when we go live during our worship experiences uh, on Saturdays at 12 p.m. Uh, also, you can connect with us on social media. You can go to Facebook or Instagram and look for Miracle City Church. And on Twitter, you can find us at Miracle City Life. We really do believe that God's doing something special in this congregation and in this family. And we're so blessed that you've chosen um, to connect with us. And if you've been blessed and you want to be a blessing, we invite you to go to our website. You can find all the information for giving there by going to miraclecitychurch.org slash give. And we know the Lord will bless you for your generosity. Thanks so much for being part of what God is doing here. And we pray many blessings on your life.